With all human beings, many, many human beings. They, they got a thing in their head and they're working towards it. You have, you know, Muslims get caught up in this stuff, like materialism is a big thing. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a nice house and having a nice career and living well. There's nothing wrong with these things, but we don't live for these things. We weren't put on this earth for these things. We were put on this earth for much bigger things. But when this, when, when the, the house is not just, you know, the house keys are not just in your hand, they're in your heart too. When that happens, there's a serious problem. Because then this is your home. Ever told you the story about that lady I met, the millionaire lady in Vegas? Right, the Muslim lady? Millionaires, huge, gigantic mansion. Oh my God, mansion. Her stairs inside the house, this is a 45 bedroom mansion by the way. The stairs inside the house was like if you take an expensive piece of silk and you throw it on stairs and it trickles down, they're shaped like that made out of marble. Like it's crazy. Her, her dining table could fit like 40 people. It was long. It was one of those, you know, those castle dining table things. An actual simulated waterfall in her backyard. She wanted me to talk to the youth. <laughs> All right. And at the end, I, I gave a dars on Surah Al-Asr in her house, I remember still. And she came to me and she said, Brother, I have a problem. So what? Because I don't want to leave this house. I don't want Jannah, I just want to stay here. And I told her, I'm sorry. You're checking out of here pretty fast. You better get used to that idea. You know, she came from a poor background and she came into a lot of wealth and alhamdulillah, now she has a lot of stuff and yeah, it was in your hands, but it shouldn't have made from its, your hands, it shouldn't have got into your heart, you know? Shaitan can do that, it can fill you with that stuff. And this becomes why you live. You see people that are so obsessed with the way their house looks? If something is moved from here to here, ah, ah, come back! Like that? You ever see that? That's, the, that? that's an indication of this is their life. This is all their life amounts to. You know? The art should be a certain way, the curtains should be a certain way, the plate should be put over there. No, I like to keep my cups in that cabinet. Why did you put them in this cabinet? Like this obsessive compulsive type of thing? There's, all your, there's, there's no bigger thing for you to worry about in life when that happens. Then you know there's nothing beyond that left. There's no bigger priorities left for you. You know? And this could be for, this is not just for materialistic people that aren't religious. Boy, I've seen this with sisters, brothers that teach durus and tafsir, and they're very religious in the community, etc. Religious knowledge and religious attitudes are two different things. They're two very different things, you know? We should not mix the two together, they're not one and the same. Just because somebody's knowledgeable doesn't mean that they're, they're over a petty lifestyle, that they have a sense of priority in life. أُولَٰئِكَ مَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمَا جَهَنَّمُ وَاسِفْ those are the people, their final place of rest, their final place to go back to is Jahannam. وَلَا يَجِدُونَ عَنْهَا مَحِيصًا And they will not find any cleansing, any pure, any, any filtering out of hellfire. مَحِيص from مَحَصَ مَحَصَ to pull something out, filth, pull filth out. They're not going to be able to find themselves extracted from hellfire. They're not going to find any kind of cleansing out of hellfire. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from being people of the hellfire. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And those who actually, uh, have believed, and have engaged and acted uh, good deeds, and they've enacted good deeds. سَنُدْخِلُهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Soon we will enter them into gardens, at the bottoms of which there are going to be rivers flowing, right from underneath them, خَالِدِينَ fiha. They will remain in them permanently, أَبَدًا, forever and ever. وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقًّا It is the promise of Allah, truly. حَقًّا is mansub here, we say that نَصْبْ عَلَى الْإِغْرَاءِ يعني Allah is saying, really, truly, that is the case. Believe it as, as uh, you would something that you can see. وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا And who would be more truthful than Allah when it comes to saying something in terms of words? أَصْدَقُ قِيلًا This is in grammar, we call this tamyiz, right? So the, the qilan is mansub as tamyiz of أَصْدَقُ So who could be more truthful in terms of everything he says than Allah? لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ So on, you know, this ayah is important because or how it, it's tied to the kalam before on the one hand, you have shaitan who gives extended hopes to people and leads them into the hellfire. On the other hand, there are those who actually make a way towards paradise. And at the end of it all, Allah says, لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ no, Reality is not based on your wishful thoughts. لَيْسَ He would say, what's the ism لَيْسَ? It's reality itself. As a matter of fact, nothing is based on your wishful thoughts. 
Nothing is going to happen just because you really are hopeful you're going to enter Jannah. That's not how it works. وَلَا أَمَانِيِّ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Nor is it, nor is there anything, any basis to the wishful thinks, uh, thinking of uh, the people of the book. وَمَنْ مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُجْزَ بِهِ Whoever would do an evil deed will be compensated with it. You know, these ayat are important to understand in their context, even though it seems like this ayah has a universal, whoever does an evil deed will be compensated with it. Well, see, the ayah is about amani. And if you don't separate, if you don't understand that it's part of the same discussion, then you can come to very wrong conclusions. Allah says, whoever does an evil deed will be paid with it. Actually, whoever does an evil deed can also get forgiven, can't they? If you just look at whoever does an evil deed will be compensated with it, that would mean their, their forgiveness, tawbah, the conversion of evil deeds into good deeds, all of that stuff, where does that go? Well, it's the people who have false hopes. People of false hopes think all their deeds are not, evil deeds are going to be forgiven whether they change their behavior or not. So they have to be told a stern answer. So this stern answer is not for all humanity, it's for those who are deluded into false hopes. What they need to hear is no, you're, you're thinking Allah's mercy is going to overshadow all of His justice. Whoever does an evil deed will be compensated by means, uh, by means of it. وَلَا يَجِدْ لَهُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا And he will, not be, he will not find anyone besides Allah in order to be a helper for himself to be a, a, an aid, a protective friend, nor a helper. Nasir is someone who comes to your help all the time, and Nasir is also comes, someone who comes to your help at the time of trouble. Nasir is the help that comes when you're in trouble. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِنَ الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَىٰ And whoever would do any kind of good deed, whether they be a male or female, مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَىٰ From male or female. وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنُونَ And at the same time, this person was a mu'min. And this is part of what was already initiated early on in the discourse of this surah. One of the joys of Jannah being that believers get to be together. And one of the terrors of hellfire being that disbelievers get to be alone. So we're, we're seeing another indication of that. It goes from huwa mu'min to fa'ula'ika yadkhulun jannah. Yani yadkhulun jannah, sayadkhulun jannah ma'an. Ma'abad. They're going to be entering jannah together. Whole groups of them. Wala yuzlamuna naqira. And they're not going to be wronged even a naqir. I'm hoping you remember what naqir means. It's the dent inside a date. That little bump. If you could fit something. Naqara tayr is also used in old Arabic when a bird picks up from its beak. Little bits and pieces that it picks up. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ Who could be better in terms of religion? In terms of choosing a way of dealing with themselves and others? Then the one who submitted his face to Allah. This is literally of course the act of sajda. أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ But more figuratively, their attitude, their pride. Wajh is also the place of our pride. In so many civilizations including the Arabs, the, uh, you know, uh, when you honor somebody, it's the symbol of that honor is worn on the head. Whether that be a crown, or that be, uh, you know, some kind of hat like generals and, you know, different people, different ranking officers have headwear, right? Or tribal members have some kind of turban, special turbans they wear. So that the face and the head is a space, uh, the place of honor. So when we submit in sajda to Allah, it's like we're saying we have no pride, no honor before you. All of that, the, my, the point of my pride has now been brought before, brought, brought down. So they submit their pride before Allah. He submits his pride before Allah. Wahu mufsinun, and he reaches a state of ihsan. So you go here in the ayah from Islam all the way to ihsan. It starts aslama wajhahu, and then the only skies that once you put submit yourself to Allah, then you can progress and progress and progress until you reach the state of ihsan. And speaking of ihsan, that means that you're going to be like which which prophet? That's the model of ihsan. Ibrahim alayhi salam. What taba'a millata Ibrahim Hanifa. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Also, if you think of it. All of his behavior represents ihsan. Right? It's excellent. It's constantly in recognition of Allah's presence. But when Allah describes him, He says, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ Right? His starting point is Islam, and he reaches ihsan. So Allah talks about it. Islam here, goes to ihsan and says, and, and thus he will have followed the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hanifan, who had always been in a state. His, his state was always of being focused towards Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button.
Thanks.